Hello, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for uh, another real estate webinar. Uh, my name is Roger Johnson, Senior Vice President of Real Estate Development here at Invest Newark. And we've got some amazing guests tonight. Uh, tonight, we'll, our topic is financing real estate deals. And for pretty much all of us, buying a house is the biggest purchase that we're gonna make in our lives. So it's important for us to share this info with the residents of Newark, also with first time home buyers and current homeowners. Money is the topic tonight. So no matter where you are in the process, you might've asked yourself, how can I get money? How can I get money or a mortgage to buy this house? Uh, you know, is there money funds available to help me renovate my house? or I can afford a mortgage, but how can I get money to help with closing costs or with down payment? So uh, so many uh, people that work in the areas are with us tonight and they can answer those questions for us. So with that, I'll introduce our speakers. We have with us the assistant director uh, from the EHD, EHD department at the city of Newark, Wasola Tayo. Um, we also have the COO of Business Development at NJRA, Mr. Uh, Daryl Godfrey, uh, and the Intern Executive Director at LISC, Judith Thompson Morris. Uh, now I'll hand it over to our guest, our, our host, Tracy Wingo, the Assistant Vice, Vice President of Real Estate Development. Tracy. Thank you, Roger. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Roger mentioned, I am the Assistant Vice President of Real Estate Development at Invest Nork. Um, thank you for joining us today to learn more about the programs that each of these panelists have um, for homeowners and developers looking to invest in North New Jersey. Um, with that being said, I will now pass it off to Basola Taiwo um, to present uh, the programs that EHD has to offer. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Invest North team, for having uh, me here today to speak a little bit about the financing options that the city of Newark um, have available for first time home buyers, current homeowners, and developers of a larger scale. Um, my name is Bisola Tyro. I am the Assistant Director of the Department of Economic and Housing Development for the city of Newark. Um, the three programs I'll be talking about today are all funded by federal home funds. Um, to start with, I want to explain how the city um, goes about dispersing federal funds. So when we receive funds from the federal government, we are required every five years to put out what is called a consolidated plan which is basically an explanation to the federal government about how the city of Newark is going to be spending those federal funds. And so it requires us to consider what our um, priorities are as a city, what the needs of the citizenship is, and what we would like to um, help uh, promote in, in, in the city of Newark. And so the three programs that would dovetail with the, with the discussion we're having today are the Live Newark Closing Cost Down Payment Assistance Program, the Live Newark Facade Improvement Program, as well as the Federal Home Funds Project uh, Program that we have for larger projects. So I will start with the Closing Cost and Down Payment Assistance Program. So it's pretty, uh, for that program, it's pretty um, straightforward. This program is only for first time home buyers, which is, I believe, common across the uh, the down, down payment assistance, assistance programs out there. Um, it cannot be used for vacation homes or second homes or rental assistant, I mean, uh, rental or investment properties. Um, the funds must be for uh, used for the purchase of a one to four uh, family dwelling. Uh, and that includes the townhomes and condos. So if you are looking to buy, you know, property that's not a one family home, you are still eligible so long as it is the first home that you are purchasing. Um, it is necessary for us to also know that you have the wherewithal to maintain ownership of that property. So we would like to see, you know, just like a mortgager would want to see that this applicant is someone who would be able to continue to pay their mortgage and maintain ownership of that property. Um, so 
another element that's necessary that I must let you know is that we want to see the contract of sale or purchase agreement um, as to the property, because we know that this assistance is for you to close out the, um, the, the sale. We also want to make sure that there's a transaction that is close to being finalized. So those are the eligibility standards. As to the features of the program, we offer up to $10,000 of a forgivable loan um, to eligible um, applicants. Now, before uh, I move forward from that number, I should mention that the city recently um, submitted its five-year consolidation plan. And in that, we let the government know that we wanted to increase the loan from 5,000 to 10,000. It used to be 5,000. So by the end of May, which is when the um, municipal council here in the city uh, would have fully adopted the ordinance that allows us to um, increase the amount, so as of, as of May of this year, you would, be eligible, you would be able to receive up to $10,000. If you apply today, the eligibility is for $5,000. But if you apply after May 17, you will be able to receive $10,000. But I put it in as $10,000 in this so I could let people know that this is what we want to produce, provide people with. Um, in order for the loan to be forgivable, it must be, the, the residence must be a primary residence for five years um, because we are really trying to incentivize people to use this not only for their first home, but also a home they intend to stay in. Um, for every year that you stay in that property, four or five years, for every year that you stay in that property, 20% of the loan will be forgiven. Um, and so that is why it's necessary for it to be not only primary, but also primary for five years. If at any point the property is turned over to a new owner, the remainder of the loan will now uh, be payable back to the city. It would be in, in essentially uh, not a default so much as it's a change in uh, the payable um, status of that loan. Um, borrowers in, in that are eligible are going to have to enter into a redevelopment loan agreement with the city. Um, and so, the loan that you receive is secured by a lien and um, it would be in a mortgage, which would be discharged at the end of five years. So it's important to also say, we do have a finite amount of money. Um, it's, it, it's that, it changes from year to year, but it's, that's why we have to let people know it's on a first come, first serve basis. So it's important that you get your applications in um, as soon as possible. But we do process these um, loan agreements year round. Uh, but once we run out of funds, unfortunately, we cannot um, add more money to it until the next year um, allocation comes out. Um, I'm going to move on now to the facade improvement program. So the facade improvement program is uh, in juxtaposition to the um, closing cost program, it is for owner-occupied homes uh, within the city of Newark. So this is a $20,000 forgivable loan for uh, uh, the improvement of a facade of a built of a, of a home that you've lived in within Newark for at least three years, at least three conservative uh, consecutive years. You have to have lived in that um, built in that home as your primary residence, right? Um, and you must remain in that home for another five years as your primary residence after the loan is granted to you. So much like the um, closing cost assistance, 20% of the loan will be forgivable for every year of the five-year requirement that you stay in that home. So similarly to the, uh, to the closing cost program as well, uh, facade improvement program applicants will have to execute a redevelopment loan agreement outlining the terms of the loan. And the terms of the loan basically mirror what I just said, has to be your home, primary residence, has to be in the city of Newark, and uh, you have to live there for three years before the application, and you must commit to living there for another five years after the loan is granted. The city will hold a mortgage secured by a lien in the amount of the loan. If there's any change in, in uh, um, a resident status, then the loan turns into a non-forgivable loan and you'd be required to pay it back. 
uh, the mortgage will be discharged after the five year um, period if you do stay in that house for the five years. Um, you have to give us a proposal as to what the improvement project will be. Like you said, like I said, it is a facade improvement. So you're thinking about making the build, you know, the house look better. Um, I will talk more about the kinds of improvement programs that, I mean, improvement projects that are permissible. Um, all of the improvement work um, that will be subsidized by this loan must be performed by a licensed contractor. So that is absolutely important. It cannot be, you know, uh, you know, done by the homeowner or someone the homeowner knows. It has to be a licensed contractor. Also, much like the closing cost program, it is subject to availability. Um, the city has a certain amount of money that's earmarked every year based on the allocation we get from the federal government, which also can change from year to year. Um, and so, you know, usually we do have enough funds, but there are times where there's more demand than we can actually supply. So it's always good to put your application in as soon as possible. And next, I will talk about the, the facade improvements that would um, will be funded by this program. So we're talking about exterior, you know, repairs to your roof, the siding, painting of the building, replacement of doors, windows, um, refurbishment of porches and, you know, entryway steps, concrete asphalt, maybe on the driveways, um, these kinds of, you know, anything external. So it's not for internal improvements. If you have like, you know, an issue with the, uh, you know, uh, maybe the bathroom or, um, foundation. This is not. It's this is not the program for you. This is more beautification um, kind of program for the city of Newark. So that when you're driving down the street, you're looking on both sides of the road, and, and the homes look well tended and taken care of. Um, and so that's um, the home facade improvement program. And now I will move on to the HUD federal funds. Right. Um, so. This is a larger pot of money, and I say that because um, it's meant to create, as opposed to maintain, existing um, um, affordable housing. So we give out a, a much higher amount of money um, through this program than with the facade improvement program or the closing cost program. And the amount is commensurate to what is needed in the project. And I'll explain that as, as we go along. So I wanna talk first about how the program is administered. Um, it is through a competitive process. So the city issues a request for proposals, which is basically a solicitation by, you know, we publicly post it and say, the city is inviting you to submit proposals to, to explain to us what, you know, low income, affordable housing project that you're doing and the, what's the capital stack, how much resources are you lacking? So essentially it is gap financing in that there is a project that's almost shovel ready um, and you have all these other financial commitments, but you just have that like, you know, uh, say uh, a gap of $500,000, $200,000, you know, those kinds of amounts, uh, depending on the scale of the project. It is really that kind of gap financing just to close it up so the project can work. It is not the main and cannot serve as the main source of funding for projects um, that would be eligible for these kinds of funds. So it's reserved for the creation of very low, which is defined as 50% AMI or, or lower, or low income affordable housing, which is 51 to 80% AMI. And AMI means area median income. And that is set by counting uh, uh, numbers about how much people earn in the area. Um, and so you have to show us how your project is going to be serving people who earn in this um, area uh, of, of money in the household. So the funding is available to for-profit entities and developers, nonprofit and community-based organization. So long as you're producing or substantially rehabilitating um, affordable housing. Um, like I said, home funds is gap financing. It's leverage against every other loan you might have in the, in the, uh, pro, in the project, uh, your, pri your own equity in, in the project. Uh, so we look at, you know, how much of the project is ready to go. Is it, you know, well uh, um, financed and funded? Is it shovel ready? Um, does it have fully committed funding sources? Uh, so we look at the project readiness. Um, 
And the amount of financial assistance that a project will get is determined on a project by project basis. And that also um, goes along with what I meant when I said, we do this in a competitive process, right? We do a solicitation. So we get all of these responses at the same time. We look at how much we have in the pot. We look at every project up against all the other ones that are submitted and say how much we can give to this one versus B versus C versus D. Uh, uh, so it really takes our team a while to go through the process, but we do try to make sure that we are supporting the, the projects that are most deserving and that will create the most um, resources for, uh, for affordable housing in the city. Um, the loans are forgivable. They're forgivable after 20 years. Um, so that means the affordability requirements in that project must be met throughout the lifetime of that loan. Uh, if there are changes to it that do not conform with the federal government's changes to affordability, which can change it from time to time, then the forgivable portion of, of that loan goes away, right? It changes. Now you have to pay the loan back and that's a more complicated thing. And, and, and uh, you get more guidance from the city if you are an applicant about what happens if you maybe have a change that now renders the loan non-forgivable. The city may, but is not required to charge up to 1% interest on the loan. Um, the applicants that are selected through the solicitation process, they must sign an affordable housing agreement with the city of Newark. And that agreement is subject to approval by the municipal council. Um, with that, I'll just let you know that we do these solicitations in tranches. So the next tranche of, of um, solicitation that we wanna do, the next solicitation is going to be released between June and August of this year. Uh, that would be it for my presentation. I will pause at this time because I know there are other presenters. Um, if there are questions, I will you know, go off camera and I'll wait for those questions to be asked. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Basola. We appreciate that. Uh, just as uh, Basola just mentioned, if you do have questions, please feel free to utilize the Q&A module as opposed to the chat module. If you put all your questions in the Q&A, we will answer. Um, we will have a question to answer portion of this webinar a uh, little towards the end. Um, and one other thing I did want to mention for those of you who are uh, late or may feel like you may have missed that, something, this presentation will be recorded and later posted um, on Invest North's YouTube page, as well as the Facebook page. Um, with that being said, now I would like to pass it off to Mr. Darrell Godfrey, the COO of Business Development at NJRA. Mr. Godfrey. Good evening, everyone. Once again, my name is Darrell Godfrey. I am the Chief Operating Officer for the, hold on for a minute, I'm sorry. I am the Chief Operating Officer for the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority. Um, thank you, Invest Newark, for having us come on today. You know, although our products may not be precisely fit what you're trying to do in terms of home ownership, I think for a developer's perspective and also for um, new entrepreneurs, some of our products and services will be helpful for them getting them started. Um, the NJRA established in uh, 1996, been here for a little bit over 20 years. Our chief executive officer is Ms. Leslie A. Anderson. We're primarily focused to provide what we call mixed use financing to 67 urban areas throughout the state of New Jersey. And the city of Newark is one of them. We have had a lot of uh, investment in the city of Newark and we're proud to participate today to seeing if there's any other opportunities that we can participate in. Our website is the njra.us, njra.us. We have several programs that we think will be very helpful to helping developers and startup entrepreneur developers to really get started. We have a slogan that we use that calls, we're there first. And what that really means when we look at an opportunity, particularly in the urban area, we wanna make sure that the city is involved. We wanna make sure that developer understands the marketplace, but also we want to help the developer, you know, get the opportunity and really get the financing that they need. We are 
operate similar to a bank, what that really means we want our money back. It's not grant funding, there's no freebies, but there's a lot of flexibility in our programs. You know, a bank would tend not to put down my banking community because they are extremely viable to what we do at the NJRA. We really look at it the back way in where we want to see how we can help a particular deal as compared to telling you what the rate is, telling you what the term is and telling you what the fees. We want to see how we can get the program started. And then our, you know, our other financial intermediaries like banks can come in to provide a takeout. All of our deals, particularly the first, you know, three ones that I have on here, the New Jersey Investment Fund, the New Jersey Urban Site Acquisition Fund, and working in Newark, we require what we call a takeout. And what that means is that we will give you the short-term money to help you with the acquisition, help you with the construction, but we want what they call a takeout at the end. What that means is that the bank at our terms are usually between, you know, 18 at the max 36 months. With the working in Newark neighborhoods, our wind fund, we can go a little longer, but at the end of the term, we went or the end of the construction or the acquisition, we want the financial you know, institution to provide the funding to pay us off. And it usually works pretty good because one of the issues that a lot of developers have and a lot of people who are first time in the business, they don't have the money needed to acquire the property or do the construction. If the deal makes sense, we can help them with that. Uh, undermining process is similar to any financial institution we, we look at cash flow, we look at your ability to pay us back, we look up your experience, but we don't need you to be doing this for 20, 25 years with a, a ton of capital. We do want some investment from you, but we try to give you flexibility when it comes there. Our Working in Newark Neighborhoods program, what they call WIN, is a program particularly designed to help in the wards of the city of Newark, the east, the west, the south, and, and really not downtown. It's geared to really help for the redevelopment in the wars throughout the city of Newark. And it's, it's a really good, very flexible fund that we just love doing in the city of Newark. We have a bond program that is also very good, but that's usually for larger deals because the maximum deal on a bond deal is between 10 to $15 million. So those are your large deals, but we, it's a very flexible bond fund. What we're excited about is our most recent grant fund where it's free money, quote unquote, that we have provided to entrepreneurs that are in commercial properties that have fell behind in the rent due to this terrible pandemic that is facing the country. We have provided close to $20 million of grant financing since the beginning of the pandemic in um, March. And we launched our program in August of last year and we put up over 15 to $20 million of grant funding to entrepreneurs and small businesses who have uh, unfortunately had some difficulty in paying their rent. And once again, it's a grant and it was um, the grants up to $10,000. Unfortunately, as of today, that fund is what we call oversubscribed because when we launched it, we had a phase one and a phase two, we had over 6,000 people who had applied. And so it could tell you what they needed. If this wasn't Newark, it was East Orange, Irvington, and all your urban areas throughout the state of New Jersey. But what it said to us is the tremendous impact that this pandemic has had on urban areas that we provide financing to. So we're happy about it. We're happy that we were able to provide some assistance, but we hope that to be, that fund to be um, recapitalized, hopefully in the next couple of weeks where we can go out to the marketplace again. You can always go to our website, njra.us, njra.us and follow it to see if there's any money that's gonna be coming available for our grant program. But in, in closing, I would just say that our, you know, our RIF fund, real estate re redevelopment investment fund, our urban site, site acquisition fund, and our working in Newark neighborhoods funds are excellent programs for entrepreneurs to take advantage of when they wanna do mixed use projects in throughout the city of Newark. I wanna stress mixed use because it's usually upstairs, downstairs, where you have the residential upstairs and downstairs you have a commercial. And that's what we're, we're there for impact and also for employment opportunities. You know, we, you know, we're very flexible. We wanna help you. 
please reach out to us. I mean, we have a staff of um, 12 people and we're growing every day, but more importantly, we're there to help you and there to help the urban centers throughout the state of New Jersey, particularly our friends at the city of Newark. I'm born and raised in the city of Newark and just love to be, you know, when, I'm, when Merdell called me and told me that this was gonna happen when Tracy Wingo got to me, I'm ecstatic about this opportunity. So please reach out to us and everyone have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, we appreciate uh, you participating today. Um, and with that, last but not least, I would like to pass it off to the Interim Executive Director at LISC, Ms. Judy Thompson-Morris. Good evening. Thank yes, you, Tracy, <laughs> for um, that welcome. Thank you, Invest Newark, um, for inviting us or inviting me to this uh, event. Happy to be here. Um, just to give you a little um, snippet about who we are, um, Greater Newark LISC, or actually Local Initiative Support Corporation, we are a national nonprofit intermediary that really focuses on community development, which is targeted development for neighborhoods that have been underserved and underinvested in particularly um, neighborhoods in the city of Newark. Our national footprint um, expands 35 cities and growing. Um, but for now, we have been in Newark since 1986. LISC is a 40-year-old organization, um, started in 1979. Um, the Greater Newark program has been around since 1986 working with our community development partners and our for-profit partners, trying to help revitalize neighborhoods. And we do that in several ways. One of which is what I'm highlighting now, which is bringing access to capital. Um, you know, and I must stress that as a um, intermediary, we are also what we call a community development financial institution which is, um, means that we can provide financing, loans, et cetera, for projects. Um, we are not a bank um, typically, so our products are really designed to help our neighborhoods thrive. And as Daryl mentioned before, um, we design it in a way that's flexible, in a way that kind of meet the needs of the projects and the neighborhoods that we are looking to serve. Um, I mentioned um, in the, the current slide, you can see here, um, you know, since our inception, we have done over 2,600 homes, helped to develop those homes, uh, provide financing for those homes, and also over 800,000 800, um, square feet, a million square feet of a commercial and retail, retail commercial space. Um, so, what I wanted to highlight for you today, and I know this project, this um, session is a combination of those who are looking to be homeowners, but also those who are in the development arena. And this particular um, presentation is speaking to those that are interested in developing properties in Newark. I wanted to share with you some of the products that we have available for, um, for developers. And, and it really is a, a suite of products that really help take the developers from the pre-development phase to the construction phase, and in some cases to um, longer term um, lending that they may need. We do have a pre-development tool, which is, um, a loan that we will give to projects or to developers who are looking to do early intervention in their, their projects, which is to help to pay for um, early stage costs, um, some uh, you know, feasibility studies uh, that they need to really assess whether or not their project will be feasible or not before they go in deeper. And as you can see in front of that, we can go up to, we provide those kind of loans up to 2 million. 
um, or interest rate uh, ranges. And for those who are, are wondering why is such a wide range, we do have what we call risk-based lending, which is um, you know, at the time that we are assessing the project, we determine how, you know, the risk level of that particular project. And if, it, if, it's, if the risk level is low, it really influences um, the type of interest rate that you can get for your project. Um, and of course, there are the associated loan fees um, with that. Um, one of the, th the key things that we do, um, which typical bankers or um, lenders don't, is that, or what we call loan to value, which is the amount you can borrow, is up to 90%, meaning that you can have up to 90% of the value of your collateral, you can borrow against that. And so that's kind of um, a little different and a little more flexible than our typical um, bank financing that you would get from a commercial lender. But of course, this is really it, it is designed to, to help the neighborhoods and communities that we are targeted on and that we are focused on. And Newark being one of our flagship uh, communities, um, we certainly have been doing this kind of lending for a while. Um, just to let you know, our, our footprint is, is also goes um, into uh, beyond Newark, um, East Orange, Orange, Irvington, and Jersey City. Um, also, we have other lending um, products that tackles acquisition, construction financing, permanent lending, bridge lending, um, and you know, uh, you know, uh, which is the last one that um, you just switched. Uh, the slide there, working line of capital that um, I know bigger developers tend to um, gravitate to when they're having huge projects um, that they're developing. I just wanted to mention, you know, this, this I'm sure is something that we can send out to you if you reach out to Invest in Work so you can examine um, this slide a little more. But one of the key things I wanted to mention to, to you is that as a nonprofit um, entity, a part of what we do is certainly affordable housing. So we don't finance 100% of market rate housing. Our products um, or, or the projects have to have some affordability involved in it for us to be able to um, really look at it seriously. So that's kind of one caveat. The other caveat is that we also are very flexible in the way we assess our projects. And so typically what we would ask of our developers is to reach out to us first for a pre-meeting, pre-discussion about their needs. So we can help them you know, talk through and determine what's the best product that fit their needs and really have a pre-assessment as to whether or not this is something that we can do because part of what we don't want to do is have developers um, waste time in providing, in filling out applications, submitting all of these, um, all of what's required with, with uh, applying for funding and then turn around and said, we can't do this. So we always have a pre-discussion with interested parties before um, inviting them to submit an application for any one of these products. And because I know that we want to get to the question and answer quest, um, session really quickly, I won't spend too much more time on this because this is something that we can share for you to digest more. Um, uh, I just wanted to say thank you again to Invest Newark and the other partners on, on this um, webinar. There is uh, contact information that you see in front of you. Um, you can reach out to me directly. Um, and my email at my email, Judith T at list.org. Um, follow up questions certainly are welcomed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morris. I appreciate you for that. Um, I did want to um, mention to any of the participants um, interested in home ownership or in mortgages. 
although we don't have representation from the following organizations, if you are interested in specifically mortgages and home ownership, there are a few organizations within Newark, uh, NACA, Urban League, and there are a few other nonprofits. Um, if you're interested and would like to speak with the, um, those organizations, you can contact us at Invest Newark and we will put you in contact with uh, the appropriate um, organizations. Um, with that, I would like to once again thank, um, thank all three of our panelists, um, and we will open it up right now to the uh, question and answer portion of the webinar. If you could all turn your cameras on. And unfortunately, uh, Mr. Godfrey had to um, sign off. So if you have any questions for NJRA, please feel free to use this email. Um, and contact him and he will be able to follow up with you and answer any of those questions. Um, and we also have um, representation from Invest Nork um, from the, our finance side, um, Roy Sutherland, and he will be able to speak to you as far as any assistance that Invest Nork that we can provide. Um, and at this time, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, submit those questions in the Q&A module. Um, how does a first time residential buyer engage and get consideration for housing in the city of Newark? If that question is for me, I'm guessing perhaps that question is for me. Um, I will answer this way. Um, if the buyer is looking to purchase city owned property, right? Then, you know, you're looking at the public agencies. You're looking either at the city of North directly or you're going to the land bank, uh, which is invest North for the city of North to see this inventory a property that you can purchase from. Um, the better um, option would be to go through the land bank. Um, it was set up to simplify the system and to ensure that people can close faster. Uh, the city system is a little lengthier because we have to get municipal council approval of every sale that we do. And the timing of that is not something that we can really um, control in every circumstance. So my short answer would be um, contact Invest Newark as a land bank and see if there are properties that you can purchase from, from the land bank. Thank you. And for anyone who is interested in the land bank, please feel free to uh, log on to Invest North's website um, and go to the land bank website and there will um, be detailed outlines of each program. Um, Roy, I don't know if you wanna to speak to the land bank piece at all. Um, no, the, the website is very, very um, comprehensive and you can, uh, pretty much purchase properties uh, through the land bank. But I will address um, to uh, also add to what Basola mentioned, those of you that are um, just in general looking for uh, first time home buyer opportunities, the city um, and Basola laid it out very well. The city has a, a great down payment assistance program, but also um, you can in fact look at uh, a webinar that we did, um, uh, I wanna say a month ago, um, in which we uh, laid out for you uh, various opportunities. Um, I think we had a, a bank representative from Valley National there. We had um, uh, representatives from NACA. NACA stands for Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. Um, and um, we had uh, two uh, local nonprofits on, on as well. Um, and, and what I would say to you is that, you know, uh, for first-time home buyers, we are always want to recommend that they go to first-time home buyer um, uh, counseling, and that's why we keep referring you to those uh, nonprofits. I know that um, Urban League is one, um, Ironbound Community Corporation is one, uh, La Casa is one. So, like, there's several uh, throughout the city that can assist you with uh, those counseling sessions. You should take advantage of those. Thank you, Roy. Um, and yes, just to piggyback off of what Roy just mentioned, we have other webinars that we've done, um, as he stated, the home ownership through the land bank that is also posted on the investment page, as well as 
um, a zoning and permitting process webinar that we did last week. Um, and th this will also be recorded and posted for uh, your reference later. Um, I want to buy a multifamily home in Newark, uh, city owned. What is the best recommendation on first step? Uh, okay, I will, <laughs> I guess I'll augment my answer um, that I had earlier on. I'll still say you go to the land bank, but I should also mention, it's important to mention, the city may not have a lot of structures. We have vacant lots that people can build on, but if you're looking to purchase actual like properties that can be refurbished, there are fewer of those than there are vacant lots. And I'll let Roy <laughs> add on. No, I think you summed it up well. Um, what happens is the land bank gets its property from the city. Um, so uh, if it has not been transferred over, that means the city may have a plan for it or, um, or they have another way of disposing of it. Um, so we, uh, we, we will get it, you know, once uh, that has been um, determined by the city. And when we do, we'll, we'll put it on the website for, uh, for sale. Um, and, and, and as Rasol said, there are, you know, very few in between uh, when it comes to that. Uh, so, you know, definitely contact, if you know the, the address, things that I need you can definitely contact the city uh, to see if it's available, um, and you can you can always look at our website to see if it's a, if it's on the uh, land bank um, property list as well. Thank you. Uh, and the next question about more information on the organizations to uh, assist with um, buying homes in Newark um, with for for host, first time home buyers. If you reach out to Invest Newark, um, we can assist you with that and point you in the right direction or you could um, refer to the video previously recorded on home ownership. Um, Roy, the next question I, I think would be for you or Roger, um, are the lots, I'm uh, uh, sorry, how often are the properties added to Newark Land Bank? As, as often as we can, I don't, I don't have a direct answer to that um, because, you know, again, it's, it's fueled by um, how often the city can um, uh, get them over to us. So we are working right now to, to add another uh, half dozen or so. Uh, we'll continue to do so uh, as the properties um, arise. So uh, just keep uh, posted. I would, I would advise you to definitely uh, register on the land bank website uh, so that you can get alerts to uh, when properties will be we added. Okay. Um, and the next question, what type of assistance do you have for those interested in purchasing commercial properties? Um, I'm going to assume that this question isn't geared towards the land bank. Um, we do have a few vacant lots um, and RFPs out on the land bank website. Um, so outside of those properties, if someone is interested in purchasing commercial properties, um, how can they go about doing that? Um, I'll, I'll let Judith kind of, because um, they have funds uh, over at LISC. Um, we, we do have, uh, we're considered a gap filler as well, if need be. Uh, we are a, uh, a nonprofit here at Invest North, but we do uh, have some financing uh, available for projects. We like to partner with folks like LISC and other CDFIs in deals if, um, if, you know, if the situation warrants it. But I'll let um, Judith also reply with that as well. So yes, Roy, we do have financing, acquisition financing, as you see before, but we also have a, a pullout for um, commercial properties. Um, certainly I didn't show it on the screen because we were largely talking about housing um, and other real estate, but we definitely have acquisition financing for um, commercial type projects. And um, as I mentioned, we do also like to partner um, and invest certainly, Invest Newark certainly is one of our partners that we would um, look to collaborate on, especially um, with developers that are relatively new to the space. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a way for us to be able to share the risk across the board and, and get to the needs of the developers that we're looking to serve. 
So um, there is an opportunity, but there, it requires us just having um, early conversation about what an individual or organization is looking for to see how best we can help. Thank you. And I think the next question will also be uh, for you, Judith. Can the LIST program be used to build one of the lots in the land bank? Sure. Yes, you can. Um, as I said, we are definitely a, a key partner with the land bank. And, um, you know, in fact, we, you know, we want to be, we also look into be a partner with with you, with Invest Newark around your Section 8 home ownership program, which I don't think was mentioned on this, but it's, an, it's, it's part of the land bank um, program initiative across the board. So they're, they're you know, we are, we are here to serve Newark and serve Newarkers and certainly as best as we can. Okay. Are there any programs for Newark residents that are looking to acquire and ren renovate an investment property. One of the barriers to investing is preliminary costs, down payments, et cetera. Um, yes, so there are programs available which you will be able to see on the land bank website. Um, once again, I think, I think someone from our investment team put that in the chat, the um, land bank website. Um, there are property, um, there are programs for Nork Advantage, which are for Nork residents. Um, so if you review in detail the program uh, requirements, that should give you all the information you need in order to move forward with land bank properties for Nork residents. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Roy. Um, no, it's it's uh, you you want to tap into because in terms of the land bank properties, they're going to be fixer uppers. So uh, you want to tap into the uh, 403K, 403B program uh, with FHA and, um, and definitely, you know, utilize that as a tool uh, to get you forward um, on your uh, endeavors with getting a property completed. But there is a process um, and you, the good part about the land bank is everything is kind of done through the website. So you can literally download the uh, policies and procedures and uh, it's very clear and, uh, and comprehensive. You can, you know, kind of get all the information that you need in order to uh, move forward with that. Okay. Uh, do I have to be a developer or can I be the owner and choose to work with the developer to build a home or residential property that I want to build? The answer to that, yes, um, you do not have to be a developer. You can be an owner as long as you have a licensed contractor um, and we, if you are selected um, through any of the land bank programs, you will um, have an opportunity to inspect the property at which time you, you would need to bring a licensed contractor. So no, you do not have to be a developer. Um, I already have a pre-approval and my credit is great. I don't need assistance from an organization. Uh, I'm finding a very difficult, uh, sorry, I'm finding it very difficult to find a property. I need assistance with the purchase process. Uh, so I'm assuming if you don't need um, assistance from the financial standpoint, um, all of the properties that we have available through the land bank, um, again, you can check the land bank website. Um, there will be properties posted and you have a 15 um, day span to submit a bid and those bids will be evaluated and you will be contacted at a later date if you are selected. Um, so all the properties that we have listed for the land bank are posted on the website. And, and I'll just add a little bit to that in terms of um, not just looking uh, for a structure, but we have vacant lots that you can actually build on and, and uh, general contractors know how to build from ground up as well. Uh, Roger Johnson is, uh, is a builder and an expert at it. And uh, he's one of the people that will be reviewing uh, what that, um, uh, that that general contractor will be um, will be trying to put up, but you'll you'll have a uh, a great opportunity to build the home that you want on the lot that is there. So don't just look at structures, but look at you know vacant lots that are there. I believe that there are some still uh, some still open on the uh, on the website. So take a look at that as well. 
And to your point, Roy, about the vacant lands, um, have have the oil tanks been removed from these vacant lots? You want that one, Roger? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll chime in there. Um, so the oil tanks um, have not been removed. Um, actually, we, we can't say for sure if they've been removed. Um, you know, what we've done for the majority of the properties is provide a environmental phase one for the properties. Um, and um, in that we, you know, we decipher if there's any type of contamination. Um, but, you know, as far as an oil tank being removed, um, you know, that uh, can't be said at this time. But once you um, move forward with the purchase or with the process of purchasing the uh, property, you can, you know, provide you know, um, you know, do your own due diligence in that aspect to see if there is a, a tank there. And of course, um, you know, um, you know, consider that cost in your in your budget. Um, and, you know, even with that, there are state programs that um, are available to uh, remove oil tanks where, um, you know, there's grant uh, funding for that as well. And what we've done at the land bank is remove that worry, at least uh, in terms of knowledge of it. So when we did the phase ones, we put it into the uh, cost of selling it to you. So uh, so that we could make sure that you were informed as, as a buyer and, and getting uh, the right information. So um, as Roger said, it is um, and that extra step, I think, is, is a big deal. Uh, so you so you'll know what you're purchasing at the time. Okay, uh, can you invest, uh, purchase the property if you do not live in Newark? The answer to that question is yes. Um, <laughs> don't mean to be repetitive, but you can refer to the land bank website um, where you will see a list of the different programs um, to, to purchase a vacant lot. You do not have to be a resident. Um, there are other programs such as move in ready, um, but some of these programs you will have to look at the detail and the program requirements because they may require you to reside in Newark for a period of time. Um, but specifically the resident advantage and side lot, you do have to be a resident of NORC. Otherwise there are programs available. Um, are the rehab of properties listed in recent RFQs uh, eligible for developer financing discuss? Um, I'm not sure if I quite understand the question but the, the two properties that are listed for the RFP um, are under the Move and Ready program. Um, they are properties that need full rehabs. And so we are looking for contractors, experienced contractors to perform this work. Um, you will you know, enter into a contract with uh, the land bank in order to renovate the property and you know, you'll be paid, uh, the contractor will be paid to do the work. Um, and after the, pro the, the construction is done, the house will then be um, posted on the land bank website as a move-in ready uh, house for a, a Newark resident to, uh, to purchase. Okay, thank you, Roger. Uh, there's a question here. Can you purchase a house from the city and rehab it yourself? Um, I don't know if uh, Roy or Roger, if you want to speak to that. Um, unfortunately, Ms. Taiwo uh, Basola had to leave the call. Um, so if you have any questions directly related to the city, you can email her, which will be posted. Um, this webinar, as I said, will be posted on our website and you can refer there for her email. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. So um, yes, you can. There, the program with the land bank is a uh, you know pro nor uh, pro nork uh, where you can purchase the house and um, you know do the renovations um, as as we mentioned you know we have uh, policies and procedures on the website um, so there is a time frame that the land bank um, allows you to uh, conduct your renovation um, which is a six month period so um, you know always keep that in consideration as you uh, move forward with the process. Um, and as far as purchasing a, a house through uh, the city hall, 
um, you know, yeah, I, I believe that is the process where you purchase it and you can rehab it yourself or hire a contractor. And Roger, do we have a list of all of the pr approved contractors, licensed contractors? Um, uh, the city uh, has that. I believe they mentioned that on the last webinar, actually, where they can um, receive a list of um, approved contractors. Okay. And then how does the bid process work for uh, the homes on, on the land bank? Um, it says, is this uh, about who offers the most money for the property or how are the bids evaluated? Uh, there's an evaluation process. Um, it is in the policies and procedures, uh, but no, it is not uh, based off of only the, um, the, the bid amount. Um, there's other criteria that is considered um, when um, you know, reviewing the applications. Is there one application for all land bank properties or do you need to apply for separate programs, parcels of land or properties? Uh, well, each property that you would like to purchase, you have to submit an application for, um, and you'll you'll see that there is a, a fifty dollar application fee uh, on the website. So, if you want to, um, you know, put an application in for three properties, then you would have to pay, um, you know, the application fee for uh, each application. Okay. Um, are the are the um, programs mentioned in this webinar available for new construction of multifamily condo buildings with multiple owners? Judith, I don't know if you wanted to speak to that or? Sure. Um, theoretically, yes, the financing programs can um, cover new construction, multifamily condos. Um, the, you know, there has to be one barring entity. So if owners are coming together in a condo facility, um, creating, you know, one entity to borrow um, funding to renovate um, the building, that's fine. So there is, um, there is an opportunity for, uh, for financing um, for those type of uh, projects or buildings. Okay, thank you. And we have one last question. Uh, there, are, there are only lots left in the land bank for bid. There doesn't appear to be any dwellings. Am I looking at it incorrectly? Currently, I believe that is the case. So uh, you do have uh, only vacant lots uh, available right now. I believe that the uh, last one closed in terms of structure, I want to say a week or so ago. So uh, as we get more on, just stay alerted and uh, we'll send out notification uh, thereof, but uh, for now, uh, please look at it from the uh, perspective of what is left, and we do have uh, vacant lots left. Okay. Thank you, Roy. Um, and we are coming about, it's about to be six o'clock, uh, so we would like to wrap up, um, but I just would like to say that if you have more information on Newark Land Bank, uh, please visit the Land Bank website, um, landbank.investnork.org. Um, if you have further questions from any of our panelists today, um, as I said, this will be posted on InvestNorks webpage. The final slide will have everyone's contact information. And uh, Ms. Morris, I would like to thank you again for participating. Um, Roger. I uh, just want to say thank you uh, all for joining us tonight. As, um, as Tracy mentioned, uh, thank you for our guests for joining. Um, thank you for uh, our Invest Norwich staff, um, Roy, um, Hilda, and Vanessa, um, you know, for your time here tonight. And uh, like we said earlier, the webinar will be available on our website as well as our YouTube page. So uh, with that, thank you and have a good evening.